Hey guys, it's definitely been a while, but um, I'm going to try and continue this series with the card game. So last video, I mentioned we would be talking about a little bit of AI, and then I'm also going to throw into this video how to get your cards to have a little bit more intuitive UI rather than pressing a key. Um, we'll just operate based off a of click. So let me show you what it looks like. I'll hit play. Um, if I click a card, notice how it kind of like it'll go up a little bit to show me I've selected that card. Um, same thing if I click any other card. And then as soon as I mouse out of that, it disappears. So once I select it the second time, then it'll actually play my card. Um, my opponents will have kind of like a thinking delay. And then after they've had enough time to think, then they'll play their own card. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that now. And um, that's kind of like what you're going to take away from this video. So let's start with a couple of variables here. Um, starting with the UI, or not the UI, the AI, sorry, uh, artificial intelligence. If we want our opponents to have a little bit of a think timer, we need to create two floats. One we can call that think timer, and then one we can call that time delay. If you make them public, it lets you play around with the values, and you can change them in the editor to see what works for your game. Um, later on, we will be adding an animation so that as they're thinking, they get like one of those thought bubbles or, you know, something similar to that. All right. And um, I believe that's it for variables. Let's go down to our functions and see what we've changed. So in the choose card function, uh, this is what we're looking at. I don't think we made any changes, but I'm going to show that to you on screen just in case we did. Uh, it has been a while, but I think that one's the same. So I'm going to close that. In the end turn function, we have made changes. And specifically, we're talking about the artificial intelligence. If we are ending our turn, that means one player has played a card and it's kind of getting ready for the next player. What we want to do is we want to now set our think timer back to zero and then choose a new value for our time delay. Now, for my game, I chose between 0.3f and then 4.9f. So it's like 0.3 to 4.9 seconds. But um, I think it might even be better to just put um, some variables here and then you can play around with them in the editor. Or you could just go back into script to change this later on. But definitely not more than five seconds. You don't want to keep your players waiting. I mean, this might even be too long. All right, and then I think the rest of the end turn function is the same. So we just added in a couple of lines here. And if we go into the update function, update will also um, play a role now. Because we're not, pre notice how that three key is not there. We don't have any like buttons to be pressed, no keys to be pressed. Instead, we are um, doing something a little bit different. So we're checking for our current player index because you don't want your cards to play automatically, just the other players. And since we are player zero, um, we're going to check for if the current player index is not zero. So back up at the top, um, right here, this current player index and current card index. Um, those, I, I think they may be new variables, but like I said, it's been a while since I've been on the series, so I might not remember. If you don't have those, go ahead and add those into your variable section of the script. So again, we're checking if uh, we're playing a card, and then if we're not playing a card, then let's go through this whole timer um, ideal situation, and then if the timer has passed a certain amount, the cooldown, then let's make the enemy play a card, or the other player play a card. I use that word enemy by default. Um, okay, so if the timer is greater than time delay, then what we're going to say is we're going to say has chosen is true, and player chosen card. So we're going to get those two things to happen. Um, every frame, we're going to increase think timer by time delta time, but we only want to do that if it's not our turn. Otherwise, that second person will play their card instantly, and that's kind of like not as interesting. It's better if there's a little bit of a delay between when you play your card and when they play their card, because then it opens up the window for like animations and stuff like that. Okay, now uh, play your chosen card. We've made a couple of changes, I think. Um, I'm going to show that to you just in case. First off, uh, if has chosen, if that one is true, then here's what we're going to do. We're going to play the card, and then we're going to end the turn. And then if not, um, you could send in a debug statement, or in the future, we'll probably change this to a UI message instead that says you need to choose a card. OK, um, next up. I'll leave that on the screen for a moment. OK, let's go into our card info script. 
So in our card info script, we have made a couple of changes. Specifically, um, take a look at on pointer exit. You'll notice this does not look like what we had before. So I showed you um, when we play the game, or you click on a card and then something happens, right? It kind of translates up a certain amount. And then if I move my pointer out of the card, then it translates back down. So here's what we did. When I do on pointer down, that's when I click on the card. Then stuff will happen. I'll talk about that in a second. But whenever I, I exit the card, here's what I need to do. I need to set selected object to null. You guys already have that. And then I need to check. If I've already chosen a card, then I want to remove that choice because I'm no longer interested in that card. And then um, if I've already chosen a card, I want to translate it down 50. The reason why I need to check if I've already chosen is otherwise I could just like mouse over all of these cards and they'd keep translating down until they're off the screen. So the reason why I'm translating it down 50 is because that's 50 pixels. And whenever I select the card, I'm gonna translate it up 50. So they should cancel each other out. We want our card to end in the same place it started. So when I do on pointer down, this will be like when I click, then what it'll do is if I have chosen, it'll actually play the card. That'd be like the second click. But if I have not chosen, this will be the first click, then I'll check. Have I selected an object yet? If the answer is no. And then have I chosen? If the answer is no, here's what I'll do. I'll choose a card. So this doesn't really play it yet, but it chooses it. And then it'll set that variable to true and we'll translate up 50. So this kind of like prepares us to play the card if we're ready. Okay, so just so we could repeat that, um, this will select the card. It doesn't actually play it, it just selects the card. It'll set it to true and then it'll translate it up so that we know we've selected the card. This is much more intuitive than having them click a card and then press a key because they might not know what key to press. All right. Um, the reason why this works is once we've selected a card, then since has chosen is true, it'll call this one first rather than this one. And so it'll actually like play that card. Okay, we don't have anything in on pointer up because realistically, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter if you put this stuff in on pointer down or on pointer up. It's just a matter of whether they've let go of the mouse. Um, personally, I think on pointer down is better just because their mouse wouldn't have moved. They would be pressing down on that specific card. All right, so once again, we should be able to hit play, uh, select a card, play it. I was having some deja vu there. I thought I saw two ten of spades, but that, that one is clubs. Um, and then our AI should be playing their cards automatically after their timer delay has been met. Now notice how whenever it's my turn, the think timer doesn't go up. But if I play another card, now think timer starts for the next person. And then once it's met the time delay, they'll play. And so in the future, we'll be putting in an animation that shows that, hey, they're thinking and is almost your time to play. Uh, we also need to add rules to our game and we possibly need to add some kind of UI customization. All right, that's it for this video, but uh, since it's been a while, please help me out. If you guys are missing something or if your game doesn't look how it should, uh, leave a comment down below so that I can go back in and figure out what it is I need to share with you and we can all be on the same page. Hope this helped and see you guys in the next video. Remember, like and subscribe, please. It helps out and it gives us better quality videos once we might even have a channel with a custom name.